Hi, welcome back. And in this segment, I'm going to show you how to join multiple tables. Up till now, I've only shown you we've only joined two tables, and so we're going to join multiple tables. And you can kind of think if you can join two tables, well, you can join three, and if you can join three, you can join four. So let's get started. You know, let's head on over to the workbench. Uh, what we're going to be joining, we already have the facility table joined in our query to the hospitalization table and we're going to join the patient table to the hospitalization table. So over at the workbench what I'd like you to do is open up the file named hospitalization underscore example. So open up that file and let's kind of get ourselves, I'm going to clear out the Thing here. Let's run the file. So we get the record set back and if you don't already have it, uh, have the output window opened up. And as you can see the query returns 456 rows of data. And this is uh, very important to note. We have a query if our and it has row restriction. If our row restriction does not change and we start joining tables, we should never see this row count go below 456. It should at minimum stay at 456. Now obviously if we're joining to a table where the relationship is one to many, we might ex we would expect to see the row count go higher, but if it ever goes below the count that we've established and our row restriction has not changed then we've done so, we either have a problem with our join or we have a problem with the data in the database one or the other okay so let's take a quick look at the query and and in this query what essentially we're doing is we're pulling a list of all the patients that have been discharged in Q4 of 2003. And as you can see we've already joined the facility table to the hospitalization table and resolved that uh, key by returning back the facility name. And now what we're going to do is we're going to join the patient table. to the hospitalization table. And we'll return back the patient's last name and their date of birth. So in terms of adding another join, it's just a function of creating another join statement. So this time we're going to open up patient and we're going to join it on patient. Dot patient underscore PK equals and then we'll just cut and paste our foreign key up above. Now let's run that and let's have a look. If you notice we're now only returning 455 rows. We've dropped a row and this is this is a problem. Something like this uh, is what's referred to in database lingo as an orphan. So we basically have an orphan record out here. And not, not a good thing at all. This is something that we would raise the flagpole and, and go talk to our DBA about. Now I've, I've purposely created this problem so I could cover this as, as a topic in, in the training. But if you ever run across something like this where you're resolving a foreign key going back to a base table and that data is gone and you have an orphan condition, that's something that you definitely need to take back to the database administration group and, and just let them in on it. Because they, they, a lot of times it can be a big deal. Now, how would we resolve this in this case? Well, what we could do is we can put a left join on that table as you've been taught and we're back to 456 rows of data. 
So now you can see how we can join more than two tables together. We've joined three tables. And you can also see the importance of understanding the row count and why that's important so we're not dropping rows in the equation. So that ends this segment of the lesson and you can take a short break and when you come back we'll continue on with this query and I'll show you how to resolve the other two keys ah, before we leave. Now that we've finished doing that we can we can take the foreign key off and we can get the patient's name again divide and conquer and it's actually last name is the name of the column that we're looking at and if you're not sure just grab the patient yep patient last name as we'll just call that patient and I said we want to get their date of birth DOB as DOB and let's run that and that looks good we probably don't want to see the the empty time segment so we we'll just add that in and there you go Okay, that concludes this video. In the next one, we'll pick up, like I said, with this query, and we'll continue to, uh, to resolve these two remaining foreign keys. See you in a few. Bye.